I thought Google is launching its own cursor killer, but this is just the first step in a very long way. This is a new coding assistant that they call as Gemini Code Assist. It's going to bring one of the best Gemini coding model to your IDE, Integrated Development Environment. This is an extension that is going to be available within Visual Studio Code and JetBrains. I'm going to tell you in this video what this is good at and what this is not good at. Let's address the elephant in the room first of all, and this is definitely not a cursor killer. In fact, it's not a windsurf killer. It could be closer to what GitHub Copilot is, but it is nowhere killer of any existing tool out there. The best part here is that this is free with a very generous usage limit. So if you are a student, if you're a professional, somebody who's not able to pay, then you can definitely use this and it is good for you. But if you're trying to edit a large code base and you want to use it to edit files across the code base and you want to make sense of an agenting assistant, then this is probably not for you. Going to the details of how you can use it, it is very simple for you to use it. All you have to do is you have to click this particular link and it will take you to a Visual Studio Code marketplace. And as you can see here, the rating is pretty bleak at this point. So it's got 262,000 installs already, like within just a week. Once you click install here, you are going to be taken to your Visual Studio Code, in my case, Visual Studio Code or JetBrains ID, then you can use it. And also they've got a GitHub app, which you can use to evaluate your PRs, which I'm not going to do at this point. So there are two IDEs that are supported, Visual Studio Code and JetBrains. I'm going to show it to you how I use it within Visual Studio Code. Within Visual Studio Code, once you install the extension, the first step that you have to do is you would be asked to sign in with Google. So that is the very first thing. Once you sign in, you have to probably make it clear that you don't want Google to use this particular data. The way you can enable that is you can click this three dot and then click privacy setting and then go here, untick this. This is by default ticked and you have to untick this because if you do not untick this, Google is going to use your data. So if you are one of those ethical internet user who thinks that, okay, Google is giving me something for free, so I don't mind giving my data to Google, then you can keep it enabled. But I am not sure if I am that person, so I'm going to keep it disabled. Now, after you do this, it is going to change it and then it is going to be available for you to use. There are different ways you can use this extension and the way easiest way you can invoke this extension is you go click here, this particular icon. This particular icon, when you click this, it is going to invoke Gemini Code Assistant and then you can go here and then say whatever you want. The second way you can use this is you can use this command I on Mac I think on Windows, you should be able to use it with control I. So once you do this, it is going to pop up this small menu where you have got four options. You have got generate, fix, explain, generate units. If you have used any slash command like on Slack or Ader, it might be pretty easy for you how you can use it. So I can select all these files. I can do command I and then say I can fix and then just fix the code. Uh, that's it and Gemini would start thinking about what is it there. I don't think there is anything to fix in this particular code, but it is going to do whatever it has to do and then finally give you the response back. And one particular thing that I felt with this entire thing is it's pretty slow. If you are coming from Cursor, if you are coming from Klein, even if you have tried GitHub Copilot, I might feel uh, that you would find it pretty slow and I don't know what is the reason for that. Whether it is free, whether it is like taking a large model, no idea, but this is very slow when you compare it with other solutions. I'm not doing any time check in here. So once you do that, it is going to open it in the diff style, which is quite popular at this particular point. Thanks to cursor, you can see what are the things that this particular command that you invoked has made change. So you can see here, okay, it's made some change here. It's made some change here. You can either accept or decline and then you can move on. If you accept it, then you can save it. And then it is particularly saved at this particular point. Now, this is the simplest way to use it. Now, let us see if I've got a file from scratch, how can I use it? And I must tell you that this is definitely not the right coding assistant for you to create anything from scratch. This is extremely good for two use cases. One, you've got a very large code base. This can take extremely long context window, thanks to Gemini models who are really good with long context windows. Second, you can use it if you want to have something that is uh, in a very single large file. So you've got a very large single file then you want to edit something, then you can use it. Like you can do tab, tab, tab. But if you do not have any code base at all, like you've got something scratch like this, let's say you want to create an Android app. This is the worst coding assistant that you can use for particularly that kind of task. So I'm going to go here and then ask for a very, something very simple. So I'm going to invoke this or I can click generate. 
and once i click generate and i give this command you would notice one weird thing that is happening with this for example i'm going to say create okay let's uh, do generate okay generate create a python code that can help me do uh, text classification using uh, robeta and i want to make sure that there are some test cases handle and um, handle and also that it follows object oriented programming so this is the command that i've given so all i'm expecting it to use a transformers or probably like pytorch and use something like robeta and then create something like this so you can see that it has successfully done it but what is the weirdest thing if you notice without me explaining let me know in the comment section right now the code is not complete it's just like 51 lines of code and you can see the code is very well incomplete so by mistake if somebody doesn't have any clue at all if they accept and then try to run this code this code will not work the reason it will not work is because this code has been stopped i don't know what is the reason is it because the output context window is very small what kind of things are happening i do not know so every time you do that you would ultimately have to go back here and then probably say uh, go to gemini code assistant and then click generate code and then do it so now it is going to generate more suggestions and you can start uh, you can start doing it like for example here in this case everything is done you can just do tab and then it will be available then tab and tab and tab 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 and you have got everything in there so you this is one thing that you have to keep in mind for you to not think that the first time the code it generates is complete but if you want complete code one of the things that you can do is let me save this code so i'm going to just call it um, uh, robert nlp okay let's just take a very quick look at the code first of all so it's got pandas um i think it's uh, trying to use pandas because it wants to read the input data set pd dot let's say pd dot okay pandas is not used anywhere that's quite weird uh, i don't know how where it is reading the data set that's very weird cool so it is not reading the data set anywhere we have got train and test split accuracy classification report then we have got the text classification data set we have got robeta tokenizer we have got robeta for sequence classification adam w not sure okay uh, they want to use the optimizer okay they are using the data loader but where the data okay data loader is coming from torch.utils.data that's cool um still pandas is not required in this particular case cool most likely this code should ideally work uh, we have got the classification report and everything so i can just go here now one of the best use cases for example for this assistant is explaining the code i can select everything open my uh, this one and then say explain this and the moment i do this it is going to take the effort of going through the code and explain it to me and this works pretty well for popular programming languages maybe not that good for less popular programming languages but if you were to use somebody's code base and then try to understand what they've done one of the easiest way to do this is this and i'm not editing this video this particular part so you can see the real time latency of how much time it takes this is not a very large code the code is like just 99 lines it's it's not huge in any way and even for this it took a couple of seconds for it to give me the answer back so it's giving me the breakdown so the file name is rob uh, robeta underscore nlp dot pi so this code implements a text classification system using robeta um, the full form of robeta is robustly optimized bert pre-training approach which i never knew until now so i should prepare this for my interviews so it has got data preparation it's got model setup it has got it says like the optimizer used is adam w there is a training loop okay where is the training loop okay there is a training loop for epochs and all those things evaluation and the code breakdown so it says here is the import and everything so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to just select everything and i'm going to say um one simple thing okay so i'm going to delete everything that is available and i'm going to say can we um can we uh have i'm going to say robeta.nlp so you can always use add and refer the file i'm going to say robeta.nlp can we have a variable learning rate in so i'm just asking uh, instead of having a hard coded learning rate here so which i guess must be the case so instead of having a hard coded learning rate i'm trying to understand if we can have a variable learning rate so let's see uh, this is a question that i've asked and i'm expecting it to edit the code so honestly like i said this is where this um, editor or this uh, assistant is excellent so you can have an existing code base you want to make some change and you can go ask the question and it is going to make some change you can open it as diff within the file so it is going to open it as diff and you can see what okay it is 
importing a new function this is called get linear schedule with warmup i guess it's a method and um, once it is imported you can see it has made changes to the code and you can accept it and voila you have ultimately got except that it has messed up some uh, intendation probably thanks to my beautiful python um okay did it mess up the intendation mm, don't know what is what is wrong here you can always fix the code oops i commented everything that's my bad we can command i fix the code fix it please fix it okay so this is the best use case so you can chat here get the code use the diff here and then fix it and accept it if you want and then just move on the second thing that you can do here is like i said you can just edit a part of a code like here i can just remove everything let's say you're just coding like a normal human and then you want some assistance so you can just go here and then let it generate for you so this will ultimately generate you can do just do tab 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 like which everybody is doing at this particular point with cursor you can do the same thing here so this is the second use case the other big thing here is that you can have multiple files into the context and then you can make it generate something but for me the biggest problem is i don't want it to generate only single file i wanted to generate multiple files which at this particular point i'm not sure if i can figure it out how to do it so i'm going to show you one simple demo of how i'm going to show, create something from scratch even though it is not the particularly right use case here i want to just show you how to do that delete the chat here and i'm going to go create a new file and um, when i do new i'm going to create a file name and i'm going to call this um, call this game um, stupid game dot html okay i'm going to call it stupid game dot html and i'm going to just say i want you to create a single html file with a beautiful beautiful three dot js flight simulator game and um, use everything from uh, cd and js and make sure the game has features like selecting different flights and uh, landing takeoff and it shows different flight telemetrics it's called i don't know telemetrics on the top left hand side it has to ultimately work okay so i've sent this and this is as you can see here it is happening real time while i'm recording this video there is no edit here and i want to see if it can actually do something that is a zero shot without a lot of fuss i've tried a lot of things before making this video most of the times when i tried something from scratch it always had a little, little bit uh, you know dicey code and i had to prompt it again and again and you know very validly somebody came and commented on my video yesterday saying that okay you're saying that it is uh, uh, making a mistake uh, but a human would also make a mistake which is quite valid at this particular point and it has given me explanation about what kind of things are we doing okay so i'm going to just go ahead open it with the diff i'm going to just accept it i'm honestly not sure if the code will work but uh, 273 line seems good okay so i'm going to go here open the file i've got stupid game.html okay w and s to control the pitch and um, i've got fighter jet cargo plane passenger plane except i don't see anything at all gog let's open the console and uh, if, let's see if there is any error it says uncaught reference at this point it is thinking that i'm stupid okay uh, stupid game okay because i named it stupid fix this error sending it and um, let's see if it is still going to create some trouble for us or it is going to ultimately fix it okay this is trying to fix it open the diff this is the problem with the diff what is the problem the problem is because gemini is always this thing that tells you that you know you can replace the entire code replace the entire code it does not work like that it is just like you know just simply go ahead and re replace imagine what happens if i accept this if i accept this all this code is gone why because it still thinks that whatever i've given here that is to be fixed i think this is the biggest problem for me with gemini whenever i have to use it as a coding assistant um any code that you give it always like you know oh you can write the remaining code here i'm like no bro just like give me the entire code and i'm going to end this video here and as you can see here you know where it stands um it's good 
but don't blindly accept everything that it tells you especially when it tells you that you can fill in but if you have got a large single file or if you're coding and you want an assistant who's like an autofill so this is basically a good chat with my code base uh, assistant at this point not a cursor killer see you in another video happy prompting